So let's talk about Todoist. I'm a fan of this app, but I don't use it for work stuff all that much. But Todoist is my go-to productivity app at present, as of the recording of this video, for my personal stuff, my family stuff, things like that. And besides the ability to use customized labels and filters, which makes Todoist really, really powerful, one of the features that Todoist offers are priority levels. And there are four of them. P1, which is red, P2, which is orange, P3, which is blue, and then P4, which has no color at all. What I'm about to show you are the ways that you can use priority levels in Todoist but also some of the ways that you shouldn't use priority levels in Todoist. So let's get started. So the first thing I'm gonna show you is one that you might already be using. And that is this idea of important and urgent, okay? Now, Carl talked about this in his video as well. He basically suggested the idea of using the Eisenhower matrix or the Covey matrix, depending on where you learn that matrix from. But I don't think you should be using the entire matrix. And I also don't think that you should be using the priority one level for the urgent either. If I'm looking at all the things that I need to do tomorrow, we're just going to look at tomorrow right now. I mean, I could spread these out over several different areas. Uh, there are things that I definitely want to make sure that I do tomorrow that are important. One of them is I want to uh, fill out the reflect and reset journal that I have. So I will highlight that. I want to watch the principles of dealing uh, this video. And I definitely want to spend time on the story brand brand script. I want to start learning Zettelkasten. Those are all very important. I want to update YNAB. And then I think the other thing that I definitely want to make sure is important is spending time with my son. So what I will do is I will label those all as priority one. And then that brings them all to the top. Those are important tasks for me. Then there's ones that are urgent. And I could tell you, some of these things that are urgent would be, say, to you know, ch make sure that I check to see if any food needs to be defrosted. Uh, taking out the recycling is probably urgent. Urgent tasks, there aren't as many, nor should there be. Ideally, you don't have as many urgent tasks as important ones. And they are below the tasks that are important. I would then probably tackle the ones that are urgent first, and then I would move on to the ones that were important. Now, the other thing you could use is you could use the priority three flag in a completely different way. And I use that for things that I can delegate. Don't necessarily mean I'm going to, but I can. So maybe I'm going to ask my daughter if she can cook dinner. Um, we'll highlight. We'll make sure that we deselect everything first. So cook dinner, I need to maybe make sure that I delegate the idea of, you know, maybe I will delegate the defrosting of the fruit, or actually the better thing that for me to delegate would be this. So maybe I can also delegate this. So now all of a sudden I can see, hey, maybe these are things I can delegate. That's one way to use the priority levels inside of Todoist. Now something else that you do not want to do when you're using priority levels in Todoist is you don't want to use them without intent or purpose. Flagging gets used very arbitrarily in a lot of cases. They're either used because you feel you need to use them or they're used because of the way that the software kind of in says you should use them. Again, we talk about priority levels and the way that they've been kind of put together in Todoist, but they've never said that you have to use them that way. I think it's important that if you're going to use priority levels at all, that they have a purpose. And that's again why I don't use the fourth level of priority flagging, because I have no intent or purpose behind it. So if you're going to flag or use priority levels in Todoist or in any app for that matter, make sure that you're using it with intent and purpose because you can't be deliberate with them otherwise. So keep that in mind. Another way to categorize your tasks and help you filter them using priority levels is to use energy levels as a means to do this. Now, Carl, again, in his video, talks about having morning tasks and evening tasks. And I know some people like to use labels for these sort of things, but the problem with that is that they're not as easy to turn on and off uh, or adjust as priority levels are. What I would recommend, rather than say AM or PM, is using energy levels instead. Let me explain why. So if you are someone who is great at mornings, then you're going to want to use your high energy tasks in the morning. And if you're great in the evenings, like I am, and I'm literally recording this in the evening right now, then you might want to use them in the evening. 
The problem if you start to use AM and PM, in my opinion, is that you kind of are locking them into those time frames. And that may not always be appropriate because someday you might not be feeling 100%. And if it's a high energy task, but you're not feeling well, and it's listed as AM, it may lead to some level of confusion. And then the filtration doesn't work too well for you, the, the way that the priority level is designed to work. It isn't future-proofed per se. What I would do and what I have done in the past is I would use the priority flags in, for, for two instances, just the top two, uh, or you could even use priority level one and priority level three. So let me give you an example. Let's start with high energy tasks, and I'm going to use the red uh, flag, which is priority one for this. Tasks that are going to require high energy for me will be this brand script, learning Zettelkasten, filling out this journal. I think those are the only ones. So I would then flag those as priority one. Then we go to ones that are not going to take a lot of energy. And these are pretty easy ones. Emptying the to-doist inbox, updating you need a budget, reaching out to someone that doesn't that I haven't talked to in a while, checking in with 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 all of these people, taking out the recycling. And I'm going to not use priority level two because, again, no intent, no reason. I'm going to use priority level three. And by the way, that does open the door for you to use priority level two for urgent tasks, like things that you have to get done. So this is another way to kind of kind of combine two of the ways that I'm speaking uh, about in this video. So priority level three, and then all of a sudden you can see now it's like, okay, well, here are the ones that are high energy and here are the ones that are low energy. If you are a morning person, you want to use high energy for uh, for that purpose, then that's great. I may do I may qualify this differently though, because as a night owl, I might say that the red tasks that are low energy, like I'm low on fuel, because the default view puts them at the top. I don't want to look at those first. I'll get to those later. Instead, I'm going to look at the blue tasks, and then I'll even go further down and look at the ones that have no flagging at all. That's another way to use priority levels inside of Todoist. Use them for energy levels, only use two, and then you define how that's going to work for you. Okay, something else that you do not want to do with priority levels inside of Todoist is to not overuse them, even if they do have a purpose. You don't want every single uh, task to have a flag on it. If it does, then you're probably doing something wrong. You aren't structuring your time in a way that's going to help you leverage what Todoist can do for you. If everything is flagged, then that's a problem. I've talked about this in different talks before, but it's like the villain in The Incredibles Syndrome, whose main evil plan was to make everybody a superhero because, as he said, when everyone was a super, no one would be. And that's kind of what happens with flags. So if you overuse them, even with uh, purpose they don't do their job nearly as effectively. That goes hand in hand with defining what the purpose is. So if you're going to use them, say, for energy levels, you better be very clear that these are high energy and these are low energy. Anything that's medium energy, don't flag. And really be honest with yourself. Is this a low energy task or is it a medium energy task? Or is this really a high energy task? Furthermore, is this a task that's high energy because I haven't broken it down enough into smaller components, either as subtasks in Todoist or better still, turning that task into a project and having other tasks inside of it. You got to think about it in those terms as well, because again, if you have too many flags, it's going to overwhelm you. And then they don't act as the filter that you need to move things forward and then stop kind of doing productive. And then you are actually going to be able to be productive. Okay. The final way I'm going to show you how to uh, use this. And, and th there's, there's a real method to this that I use uh, in terms of illuminating my intentions, and I call it the six. I really strive to get six of my intentions fulfilled every single day. Sure, I have a lot of other tasks to do, but I am getting tasks from a whole bunch of different areas, and I want to make sure that anything that I'm working on is highlighted here. So I don't just use Todoist. I also use ClickUp for business stuff, but if you're using Todoist solely as your task manager, this will work for you because all you need to do is use the flags to highlight the six things that you absolutely want to do either today, this week, even this month. If that's the case, this is where using the priority one uh, priority level, that red flag is the one that you want to use. Again, 
if you decide to combine this with, say, things you want to delegate, then you may want to use the blue for delegation. So if I'm going to use this, and as we were recording this, this flipped over to the next day, I can look at these and say, okay, well, what are the six things today? What are my six for today? Well, my six for today are for sure to do this, the, these four right here. I also want to make sure I update you need a budget. And I am going to do this. These are all of my intentions. And I'm going to flag them as priority one. And they all move to the top. So because I'm only, these are the highlighted ones, everything else is not prioritized and again like i said i could go oh well you know what i want this to be delegated so and in some instances they're delegated within the labels which you could see here but i'm going to delegate that and i'm going to delegate that and i'm going to delegate that and then i could go i could come i could combine it with one of the early recommendations and say oh these are blue i want them to be at that level or you could make it just super simple and you only see your six. And again, you could do this for a project if you want. Um, so you can go into every project and, and flag six tasks in there. You could do it for the entire week and say, okay, I want a, these six in here. There's lots of different ways that you can do this. But again, it's about being intentional. Just because you have all of these priority levels that you can use doesn't mean that you need to. And that's something worth keeping in mind. So there you go. Three ways that you can use priority levels in Todoist as well as some recommendations on how not to use them. Now, if you want to learn more about one of those ways, but beyond Todoist, the six, for example, then I put a link to that in the description. It's my flagship product, and it doesn't just focus around tasks either. You could use it for projects, for time theming. You can use it for habits and for journaling, so many other ways. So I encourage you to check that out if you're interested and you saw how I incorporated the use of the six inside of Todoist as well as a couple other ways that you can use priority levels. Which of these ways of using priority levels resonates with you? Do you have another way that you use priority levels in Todoist? I'd love to hear from you. Just let me know in the comments. Say, hey, Mike, you know, I really liked this way. I'm going to give it a try. Or this is the way I use them. Maybe you might want to give it a try. Or maybe you're going to use a combination of these ways. Who knows? That's the great thing about Todoist. It's super powerful, super flexible. It's really a fantastic productivity tool. That's it for this video. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch it. If you are interested in more videos from me and you don't want to miss them, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. That way you don't miss a single video as I release them on this channel. Again, thanks for watching. I'll see you later.